माई सेल्फ एम गुनाक अस्टेंट प्रोफेसर आफ् जुवालजी गवर्नमेंट डिग्री कॉलेज सिद्धिपेट तेलंगा स्टेट टुडे लेट अस डिस्क लीच एक्सक्रेटरी सिस्टम बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द लीच एक्सक्रेटरी सिस्टम लेट अस हैव ए लुक एट द सिस्टमेटिक पोजिशन आफ् लीच लीच बिलांग्स टू द फाइलम अनिलीडा एज इट इज हैविंग मेटामेरिक सेगमेंटेशन लीच बिलांग्स टू द क्लास हेरोडीनिया because segments are subdivided externally into annuli coelom is reduced and suckers are present leech belongs to the order nethopdelida because tooth or teeth are present in the jaws and preoral chamber is present leech belongs to the family herodidae because of uh, because it has five pairs of eyes arranged in a semi oval rows leech belongs to the genus herodinaria species granulosa leech excretory system main excretory organs of leech are nephridia total number of nephridia are 17 pairs and these are located one pair each from 6th to 22nd segments they are present on either side of the ventral nerve cord and there are all these 17 pairs are classified into two types first type of nephridia they are present on from 6th to 11th segments in these six segments six pre test six pairs of pre testicular nephridia are present this is the first type and the second type is testicular nephridia there are 11 pairs are present from 12th to 22nd segments now let us have a look at the clearly here so totally here you can see this is these are the nephridia totally so from anterior portion from sixth segment this is the sixth segment around here and from sixth segment to 17th segment you can have this is the last pair of the segments which are present in the 22nd segment 22nd segment this is the last pair of nephridia which are called the testicular nephridia these testicular nephridia why they are called so they are li they lie in the segments containing testis sacs and with the testis sacs they are they are intimately associated these nephridia are intimately associated with the testis testis sacs and these testis sacs are located in the segments from 11 to 22 now what are the parts of the testicular nephridium and this testicular nephridium is considered as a typical nephridium a typical nephridium and it is a horseshoe shaped structure and it consists of ciliated organ initial lobe apical lobe main lobe inner lobe a vesicle duct and a vesicle with nephridio pore now you can see here in this figure see this is the testis sac a rounded structure this is the testis sac and you can see this is the initial lobe second one so this is the initial lobe and third one is apical lobe so this is the apical lobe it looks like a handle of a walking stick it uh, ha it has a turn around it on itself then the main lobe now we can see the main lobe here so this is the main lobe this is the main lobe and main lobe has two two branches the one anterior lobe and posterior lobe and then a vesicular duct we can see a vesicular duct here this is the vesicular duct which passes downwards and then you see you can see a vesicle also here this is vesicle which which leads into a small duct like structure and this duct opens outside through a nephridio pore this is the nephridio pore so this is the structure of a typical nephridium and that typical nephridium pre testis testicular nephridium is considered as a typical nephridium now let us have a look at the structure of nephridium it in detail see testicular nephridium as i said earlier it's a horseshoe shaped structure now you can see from the long side you can see this is a horseshoe shaped structure you can see 
its one arm extends into the testis sac whereas the other enter the terminal vesicle this is the one arm of the uh, nephridium and this is the other arm of the nephridium one arm test enter into the testis sac and the other arm leads into the leads into the vesicle then remaining parts it consists of the remaining parts as many lobes are present here let us start with the main lobe main lobe is the horseshoe proper this main lobe considered as horseshoe proper because it it is it is the main part of the total nephridium it occupies almost lateral ventral position and between the adjacent diverticula of the crop actually the crop is a part of the digestive system of leech and it has many diverticula in between the adjacent diverticula these uh, uh, main lobes are situated then it consists of two unequal limbs as i said earlier this is a main lobe which has it is it consists of two unequal limbs one anterior which is the longer of the two and a small posterior limb one anterior limb and one posterior limb one anterior long limb and a posterior small limb then vesicle now come to the vesicle from the inner ventral end of the anterior limb from the inner ventral limb see from the inner from the inner ventral side of the anterior limb this is the anterior limb of the main limb anterior limb of the main lobe and this is the posterior limb of the main lobe and from the inner end of the anterior limb there arises a small vesicle vesicular duct arises and it a narrow duct which is a vesicle duct which passes backwards alongside the spacious bladder or the terminal vesicle see here terminal vesicle you can see a bladder like structure and along with this that uh, along with that border i mean on the on the sides of the vesicle vesicular duct runs downwards and then opens into the duct opens into the vesicle the vesicle is large very very large sac with a non contract which is a non contractile and a thin wall and it is lined internally by ciliated epithelium the vesicle leads into a short as i said the vesicle leads into a short narrow tube like structure or duct like structure here duct like structure and this duct opens outside on the body wall of the leech through a nephridio pore now coming to the next part is apical lobe posterior limb of main lobe passes backwards passes backwards and then here you can see the posterior limb of the main lobe passes backwards and forms a stout lobe the apical lobe in the antero posterior position beneath the gut the anterior end of this lobe is bent on itself see here you can see the antero posterior the posterior limb of the main lobe which is passing and continues as an apical lobe and this apical lobe is bent on its bent on itself on itself like the handle of a walking stick the cells the cells of this apical lobe are large and they are traversed by regular intracellular canals then coming to the inner lobe this inner lobe actually is a short lobe which lies all along the inner concavity of the main lobe all along the inner concavity of the main lobe now we can see so this is the inner lobe so this is the inner lobe so this inner lobe is lying in lying along the inner concavity of the main lobe and also runs forward along the outer border of the apical lobe see along the outer border of the apical lobe and then uh, it joins the main lobe at its posterior extremity see here here at the posterior extremity it is joining the main lobe then the cells of this inner lobe are long and tubular and with a large lumen and cytoplasm contains a small nucleus then coming to the initial lobe so next lobe is initial lobe initial lobe is also called testis lobe because it has a connection with the testis sac 
it consists of a single row of tubular cells placed end to end and have intracellular canal which gives of numerous diverticula in each cell and it is extremely long twined around twined around the apical lobe now you can see in the figure this initial lobe or testis lobe actually it it has a connection with the here it is called testis sac then it is uh, it twines twines around the apical lobe like this and it is as i said it is a transparent slender and cord like structure it is twined around the apical lobe it joins the main lobe at its posterior extremity see here it it joins the main lobe it joins the main lobe with the posterior extremity here it is joining here then at its anterior extremity it runs as a slender cord of cells towards the testis sac as i said it is connective it is it is has a connection with the testis sac it runs the forwards up to the testis sac by the side of the perinephrostomial ampulla this is the perinephrostomial ampulla in which uh, the ciliated organ is present then coming to the ciliated organ this ciliated organ is suspended as i said just now is included or is present in the perinephrostomial ampulla and it is suspended or connected to the perinephrostomial wall by four or five strands which are called trabeculae and it is a structure which is corresponding to the funnel of nephridiostom of typical annelid nephridium and it consists of a central reservoir that means ciliated organ consists of a central reservoir and many ciliated funnel like structures and these ciliated funnels are fits into many pore like structures that are present on it then though this ciliated organ organ it is connected to nephridium but it plays no role in excretion but actually it is associated with the hemocelomic system where it produces celomic corpuscles and drives them into hemocelomic system then coming to the histology of nephridium just now we have discussed many lobes like uh, main lobe apical lobe inner lobe initial lobe all these lobes are present and all these lobes they are made up of a mass of gland cells gland cells and all these lobes are traversed by a system of canals there are certain differences in the canals like structures also initial lobe is traversed by intracellular canal whereas all the other lobes are with central canals all the other lobes with central canals here the central canal receives numerous intracellular canaliculi from surrounding cells and all through all all of all of its along its length these canaliculi of adjacent cells they form a branch network and form an intricate meshwork throughout the nephridium throughout the nephridium they form a network like structure or a meshwork like structure and then intricately and then throughout the nephridium they form this intricate nature of meshwork and this in the intracellular canal of the initial lobe opens into the canaliculi of the main lobe now coming to the just now we have seen all the histology histology and structure of all lobes of the typical nephridium and as i said the testicular nephridium is called as a typical nephridium now coming to the pre testicular nephridia as i said earlier pre testicular nephridia which are six pairs in number six pairs and they are present in the pre testicular segments that is from the six segment number 6 to 11th and why they are called pre testicular nephridia because they are not at all associated with the testis sacs whereas testicular nephridia are associated with the testic sac testis sacs just they are only associated physically but not there is no physiological association only physical association then no testis sacs are present in this pre testicular nephridia hence they are called 
pretesticular nephridia and here in this pre in this pretesticular nephridia one more thing is ciliated organs are also completely absent these ciliated organs are present associated with the associated with the testic testis sacs only so that's why here ciliated organs are also absent now in this figure you can see here here you can see from here the reproductive structures are starting now here so these are the testis sac so these are the testis sac and this is the nephridia so this nephridia having connection with the testis here on either side they are having connections like this but whereas here here in the pre pre uh, pre testicular segments here in these six pairs there is no testis so there is no association with the testis sac so that's why these segments are called pre testicular segments and these nephridia are called pre testicular nephridia now coming to the main thing physiology of excretion just now i told you though ciliated organ is associated with the excretory material excretory organs that is nephridia but ciliated organ do not play any role in the excretion it is associated with the hemocelomic system functionally as it produces coelomic corpuscles and drives them into the hemocelomic system now the physiology of excretion here then nephridium proper functions as a true excretory organ nephridium proper means the nephridium which present which uh, in which uh, main all main lobes uh, apical lobe inner lobe initial lobes are present this is the nephridium proper and this actually eliminates nitrogenous waste these nitrogenous waste they consist mainly ammonia and small amounts of urea of course is also present as a nitrogenous waste but main mainly leach excretes ammonia as a nitrogenous waste material that's why leach is considered as an ammonotelic animal and nephridium nephridium is richly supplied with hemocelomic fluid that is uh, here the blood in the leach is called as hemocelomic fluid and the gland cells all the gland cells that i just know just now told you all the lobes are innervated with they are present many gland cells are present and these gland cells can separate waste products or nitrogenous waste products from hemocelomic fluid and all these excretory waste are nitrogenous waste are carried through the intricate mesh meshwork of uh, central canals and uh, in uh, central canals and uh, intracellular canaliculi and central canals and then pass to the vesicular duct and through the vesicular duct they enter into the vesicular duct vesic uh, vesicle and then when the vesicle is filled with the excretory fluid all, all the excretory fluid is uh, uh, discharged outside through nephridio pore nephridio pore so this is all about physiology of excretion so in this excretory system of uh, leech we have learned the excretory organs of the leech which are mainly two types pre testicular nephridia and testicular nephridia among these testicular nephridia are considered as typical nephridia and pre testicular nephridia are arranged in the 6th segment to 11th segment one pair of uh, each one pair in each each segment uh, totally six pairs of pre testicular nephridia and then the testicular nephridia are arranged in segment number 12th to 22nd and these testicular nephridia are actually associated they are associated with the testis sacs in these segments that's why they are called testicular nephridia so though though, though there are differences in the association of the testis sacs there is no difference in the function of all testis all nephridia thank you